There are multiple issues that I ran into with these headers. First of all, to mount the header on the actual cylinder head, I had to drill out all the holes because nothing would fit. I could put the bolt hole in the front, but then none of the others would line up. I had to put it on the bench, drill out every hole enough, so then all the bolts would fit. That's my first sign right there that this probably wasn't a good choice. The second thing that I learned, these V-band flanges right here are kind of like a one-off design. I bought the same size V-band flanges to see if they could work. I tried to merge the two together. This is a very weird design. Those are just the small issues, but let's get into the major things. Obviously these were a universal application and they're not meant for what we're trying to do. These two ports right here are gonna be in our way. Our steering shaft starts right over here and ends up all the way over there. So the best thing that we can do, let's get this header off, cut our tubes, get our steering shaft in place, then we can see what we're working on. Right, guys so here's our header if you can't tell i did have to drill out those holes but nothing lined up that's what you get with a cheap header like this the quality of the steel is not bad definitely not made in the u.s they're inch and three quarter primaries which is a pretty good size tube. and when you buy these junk headers this is what they start out at. i had to chop a good three and a half four inches right out of this head i bought the same exact headers for the camaro and obviously we know that project changed a little bit because i wanted to just put a small block in it just make a nice cruiser something we don't have to worry about and just leave it alone As you can see, the header is uh, pretty chopped up, but this is the this is the route we gotta go. Doing this with a hacksaw definitely sucks, but that's fun. This is all we got, and that's what we're working with what we got here. Right, let's get this thing up and in place. You stay just that. Way. Okay, all right. Yeah, we're not gonna do that. All right. Take two. That worked a little bit better. And right, I'm gonna give you guys the best seat in the house. Right here. We get this little guy out of the way. Hopefully it stays on the way. Steering shaft has to go right here, which I happen to have. I had to lube my shaft there. Thing hasn't been lubed up in like 40 years. Came back to life though. <laughs> Let's see if the shaft will move. And it does, so that's a plus. So we're just gonna run it like that. Open exhaust port. Don't even need it. The back port looks like it'll be pretty easy. Looks like I can just come out, go right around. I like that. If I add on a piece, get that to go right around, right? And then I can just connect it like that. That's probably what we'll do. So we're gonna add on a piece in here, space that out, and we'll get that to fit nice. And then we'll worry about connecting it up here. This port right here, that's gonna be the problem. Cut this at an angle and just bring that right around like that. This is gonna be interesting. Probably the toughest one that I've ever done. And I've never done one. So here we go. I ended up having a little bit of a gap. There's gonna be too much to take. So unfortunately I had to take the MIG welder out, but this stainless is so cheap anyways, it doesn't really matter. It's not even worth it. I should have just bought the real deal headers, but we're working with what we got. We already purchased these. So you know what? If we gotta throw a little MIG wire at it, I really don't care. Honestly, the fitment's pretty damn good. We got plenty of clearance on it. We got steering now. Perfect. Exactly what we want. We got steering, guys. Finally, we got some progress. Well, it looks like the rest of our rear axle parts came in, so let's slap this thing together and get it under the truck.
right, what's going on guys? Obviously, we got the axle in the truck, which is a huge step. Um, I just got out of work. It's about 11 o'clock. I'm tired, but you know, this whole thing here is uh, it's not gonna get done unless I, and I, unless I work for it, realistically. So that's what we're trying to do here. We got our axles all set up. Gonna put a little bit of, a little bit of oil right here. Just lube that up a little bit as much as I can. I have the seals installed. All right, this is gonna be kind of a, kind of the fun part here. We got one axle slipping right in. All right, guys. So we have one quick performance axle installed. And I'm going to show you the main reason why I went with a Ford 9-inch. The 8.8 that I had was a C-clip axle, meaning inside the carrier, there was a little C-clip that holds the axles in on either side. However, with a 9-inch, they have this retainer plate here. The main reason that this is such a big deal is if somehow I snap this axle, which is definitely not going to happen, it's going to take quite a bit for me to snap a 35-spline axle. But if it does happen to snap, this axle is retained by this retainer plate right here. So no matter what I do, if I snap this axle, this thing is not coming apart. It's gonna snap right inside the tube. The wheel's not gonna come off. We're not gonna crash the truck. The second reason, this being C-clip eliminator style axle, I can run a full slick on this and it's NHRA approved. Which is a big deal because the tracks that I'm gonna be running at, I literally have two tracks that are close to me. Lebanon Valley, which is two hours and 20 minutes away. Then I have New England Dragway, which is an hour and 50 minutes away. And both of those are NHRA tracks. I have to go by their rule book to run my truck on there for test and tune. Part of the reason this garage is the way it is is because I have too much stuff. As anybody with a garage knows, you kind of just accumulate. Some stuff you need, but don't necessarily need all the time. So it just creates a lot of clutter. What I want to do is reconfigure this garage a little bit and it does have great potential. Any garage is better than none because I was always working on the ground. I never had a roof over my head. I didn't have anything. I was working outside through all the elements. So to even have this garage is just a, to even work towards this and end up with a garage is the greatest thing ever. And I appreciate it every day. But there are some ways that I can improve this place. And I spend anywhere from 25 to 30 hours a week on top of my 60 hour work week. So I'm out here quite a bit. One thing we do need to focus on is maximizing our time. The time that you spend on your projects and stuff like that, if you're constantly tripping over stuff, you got stuff in the way, like if you're constantly trying to reorganize stuff, tripping over stuff, it just becomes a nightmare and you end up kind of going in circles and really getting nothing done. So I want to change it up a little bit so we can actually work out here better and it actually makes sense the way we work out here. This garage is a weird size. It's 21 foot deep and it's 19 and a half foot wide. Very weird to the ceiling. It's almost about nine feet. I do have a little bit of a loft up there where I can store stuff, but a lot of the stuff up there is kind of just junk. There's a few different ways we can configure this to make our lives easier and make this garage actually make sense because when we're out here, being productive is the most important thing. I just want to work on my time management a little, maximize the way that you can actually work in this little garage, and we are going to do that. But before I can do that, we got to go upstairs and we got to get rid of a bunch of stuff because there's stuff up there that I really don't need, and we got to sift through what's good, what's not good. We're going to sift through some stuff that's been up there for quite a while. All right, guys, it's time for the never-before-seen footage. This is what's up here. <laughs> this is all this stuff's got to go. That stuff's going to be like hung on the wall. I got fan shrouds, LS parts. I'm gonna have to come up with a shelf system to put some of this stuff. Some of this stuff's good, some of it's getting sold, some of it's getting thrown out. Like there's just a lot of random stuff. You guys know how it goes, you accumulate stuff over the years. And uh, yeah, this is this is kind of where we're at. We got a lot of stuff to, so, I mean, it's really not that bad, but we got, a, we got a good amount of stuff to go through. I got some Ranger stuff. I got, this is just some old stuff that's been up here. This garage is from 1944, so there there is some weird stuff up here. Bezel for the square body, some old toolboxes. You know, we got some motorcycle parts. Everything that's up here right now has got to go. And the only way that you're going to find out what happens is at a later date, because there's tons of things that I have to take down from this garage. Everything is a mess, and I got to pick and choose what I want to keep, what I want to get rid of. And it's kind of a lot because I have multiple different vehicle projects going on. 
and you really have to sift through things because you don't want to throw something away that you're going to need down the road anyways. For instance, that Camaro seat that you guys saw, I bought another seat for the car, but the track in the back of it is really not that good. So if I'm going to have a seat recovered, I might need that seat frame, and if I throw it out, I'm going to have to buy another one. In that specific seat frame, you cannot buy an aftermarket. Keep in mind these changes that are going to be coming up in the garage, they're not going to happen overnight and it's definitely not going to be in the next few videos. But in the meantime, we have many things to do. I got to figure out the boost control system on the S10. I have to get tires on the truck. There is a laundry list of things that need to get done on this. And I'm one guy working about 60 hours a week trying to balance family life, work life, and garage life. So bear with me, I know things kind of take their time. But anyways guys, I just want to say thank you for watching the DeRosa Driven YouTube channel. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, smash that subscribe button, drop a comment, like the video, share the video, and I will catch you on the next one.